Hello garden friends. In this video, I want to share with you how I'm using a bullet journal as my garden journal. This past year in 2022, I decided to try a bullet journal and I really enjoyed it. This is my garden bullet journal for 2022. I also got myself one for 2023, so I'll share that more in another video, but that's how much I've liked this method. This is from Archer and Olive. I'll have them linked below. This is a B5 size. Um, you, I don't think you'll be able to find this exact one because it's from the plant-based bride collection but they have lots of beautiful options i am going to go ahead and flip your view so that you can see better and i will show you how i have used this bullet journal as my garden journal in 2022. okay let's get started um, the, the first page here this first page is my index that's pretty self-explanatory this is my first year bullet journaling so i have a lot more space in the index than i actually needed um, and i did this scrapbooky kind of style and i drew this i used some acrylographs from archer and olive some washi tape um, this is a page you may want to include i like to have it but you obviously don't need it okay so next i have two pages that are my calendar spread and my intention with this is to write down um, Kind of things I've observed in the garden. Uh, I have a note here on my average last frost date and I also circled it here. So I have these mini calendars because I just like to see the days of the week. It helps me kind of figure out when I can do things uh, with my schedule. Um, but then I did these down below um, to just the numbers. I put in um, some of the moon phases. I didn't do it with all of them. I think I put it in there because I wanted to prune based on the moon phases, <laughs> prune my fruit trees. Um, and I did start noting some things like the first crocus blooms and when I pruned the apple trees and such. But I, I wanted to do more and hopefully next year I'll do similar pages with more. Um, yeah, so to fit it all, it's in two spreads. I made other notes like, bar, are the barn swallows gone? I hadn't heard them. So, um, and I noted when we had like overnight, we had got down to 33 and had a little bit of damage. Um, this is a 31 overnight, so it was definitely a, a freeze frost and then we had a hard frost here. My idea is if I do this every year it'll help me kind of feel out the rhythms of the year and how it goes and uh, see what the differences are. Um, and again I just actually painted the background of these with watercolor and then used acrylographs um, which are kind of like paint pens. Um, I think they're like acrylic paint pens, acrylographs, um, to, do, to do the designs. Okay, this is for my moon phases. So I, did, I have made a video about gardening by the moon phases. I like to do it a little bit, but it's not like, um, I don't do everything by it because there's a lot of factors involved. But this kind of talks about um, what you might want to do in each of the moon phases. And this, this is the moon phases for 2022. Um, and this is one of my favorite drawings I've done in here. I love that, I love that. And this is actually on, I also purchased some extra paper from Archer and Olive, and so you'll see some of it in other places. Um, but I got one that's, I think it's the Neapolitan. So it's got black craft paper, which is like the brown and white. Um, so I just used some of that and glued it in here. All right, so this page had really good intentions. I mean, I have my pretty quote here, Rain will make the flowers grow, which is from a musical. And if you know what musical, comment below. Um, okay, so I, this was intended to be a rain and a temperature tracker for the year, and you can see that I did not continue filling it in, and um, part of that is because I don't currently have a weather system here right now, and I would actually really like to get one. So I may or may not set this up again next year, or I may just do the rain. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So. Um, this is for my garden goals for the year. I had like habits and then I broke it into um, goals for the potage and big projects. I am always more ambitious um, than I have the time and energy for, especially having little children around. So um, you'll see it's not all checked off and I kind of expect that, but I, I still like to set my ambitious goals. This is a wish list. I just started writing down, um, my intention was for this side to be plants and this side to be other things. Um, I did get some of the things. This is just, I see, I watch a lot of other people's YouTube videos and follow people on Instagram and just see things around and want them. So I <laughs> just a place for me to record all of the plants that I might want to get in the future and other things. Okay, so I started this expenses page and then didn't, didn't do it. Um, 
So I'm going to try to do a page like this actually in my bullet journal this next year, but um, I won't add it to my garden journal again. Okay, so this page is actually just pictures of an overview of the year. Um, and if you haven't yet, you can go check out my uh, yearly review video for 2022 and some of these images. Many of these images I think are actually in there. Um, my intention for this page originally was to have drone shots from each month, but um, it was a, a pretty big learning curve in learning how to use my drone and then I promptly broke it. So we're going to see if I can get it fixed for this season, but anyway, I just went with some general like pictures from around and I think it looks nice. Okay, so this page, well this section here is for my potager, which is my kitchen garden, and um, it's where I grow most of our veggies and fruits, and I also grow flowers and herbs. And so I need a little map, and this kind of changes. Now this is when we set up together last year. February or March. Um, I will link that video as well. And I used it, I like took it out to the garden with me and, um, but I wanted a place to store it without like attaching it in here. So I made this little pocket out of just some, I think it's brown cardstock I had on hand. And it just, it just, it just lives in there. <laughs> and I did a little painting that's supposed to be my view from a gate that is currently non-existent, but we're still working on it. Um, and then I have pages, um, I did little tabs for different uh, categories in my potager. So this, these are fruits and vegetables, and I did, um, you've probably seen these charts before on when things should be uh, sowed inside, direct sown, transplanted, fertilized, harvest, such. So the X's are for when I, I wanted to fertilize things. Um, I don't know if I fully followed this. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll do this style again, if it was like actually helpful or not. We'll, we'll see. Um, this is kind of a fun page this year. I, I really liked doing the draw the, the watercolors on it. These are my types of tomatoes and types of pumpkins and my intention was to write down the variety um, and when they when we got the first harvest to kind of rate them. Um, and I did a little bit better on the pumpkins than I did with the tomatoes, but I grew a lot more tomatoes than that. I actually also have a video on tomato varieties I grew this past year, so I can link that as well. Um, but I do really like the watercolor on these pages, but I'm not sure I would do this again just because, um, yeah, I, I could always put this later in the journal if I wanted to. Um, okay, so then herbs. Um, I had big intentions for my herb gardens this year, and I, I did better than in past years, but I didn't quite hit what I wanted to. I have these herb um, garden beds in my potager space, and this one's pretty well filled out. There's these, um, uh, with the perennials here, there's a couple annuals I stick in every year, and sometimes they do better than other years. Um, this is my herb circle, and then uh, the intention is for this to be more of a medicinal herb bed and this to be more of a culinary herb bed. Of course, there's overlap, so I just kind of wanted to make notes on what was in there and what I wanted to add, and I had notes here. I also have an edible flower bed that you, it's kind of right off the page over here. Um, so I made notes on what I wanted to plant in that. That's mostly annuals um, and just herbs I wanted to add. So. Yeah, that's, I'll probably do something like this again. Um, it's helpful to like know what's in there and what I want to add. This I didn't use as much as I want to, but my intention here was the harvest, um, to note which herbs I want to harvest and what I want to do with them. So it might be better. I kind of did it as I was going and you can see I did it more in the spring. These are spring flowers and herbs. And um, yeah, so I, I, I'll i probably try to get this done a little earlier so that I know what I want to make with each thing and then I can always add to it. And then flowers. I love growing cut flowers to make arrangements. So um, I did the same thing I did with my fruits and veggie page where the, the sowing, transplanted, harvesting. Um, in case you can't read it, the pink is sow inside, the blue is direct sow, uh, the purple is transplant. So that's for ones I've sowed inside, obviously. And um, green is when I can harvest them. And I kind of wanted to see like when uh, if this would, this is like information from seed packets and other sources online, and I wanted to see if this would match up, and I didn't really have a good way of recording whether it matched up. I did kind of put here that my bachelor's buttons did start earlier, and that's because I actually fall sewed them in the fall of 2021, but I didn't have a good way to note that. So anyway, <laughs> that's what that is, and then this part is actually, was really helpful. This was the beds that I, I was planning to grow the flowers in, and I kind of just noted what, uh, what types and varieties and like different colors 
of the flowers I wanted in each place. So like this was my row of snapdragons and my row of zinnias. I was able to kind of sketch out um, what, which ones I wanted in what order because I was going for an ombre effect. So that was really helpful. Um, this was just another note page for flowers. I made notes here on kind of how to put together a bouquet. Um, these are notes from um, Florette and um, tools for flower arranging and such. Um, again, didn't, didn't take as many notes, but I think it's a helpful page. Um, I had glued in some of my dried, uh, I think it's hydrangea blooms in there. Some of them kind of fell out. But anyway. Okay, these next few pages are on specific areas of the garden. Um, so let me see if I can just turn this for you for, well, let me talk about it on turn. Um, so this is for my berry garden and my intention with this too is record what uh, fruit, when um, fruit um, ripened. Um, I was actually gonna, I noted when they were flowering and when they ripened, so I need, I would like to be better at recording this kind of thing. And I don't know if I wanna, I don't, I probably won't do it this way again, but I might do it like in my notes sections, which I'll, I'll get to. Um, and I also wanted to do like a little map here. Okay, so I, hopefully you can see that a little bit better. This was a sketch of what I intended this year and also starting with what was there. So I had um, in already, I had blueberries, raspberries, um, cherry trees and honey uh, berries in the back. And also um, uh, the fence with the blackberries in the front. And um, this year I added the rose circle. So this was me sketching that out before I did it. And then I had intentions of adding Eventually, I actually didn't think I was going to get to it this year anyway, but uh, this was just an idea of adding extra beds here. So that's an idea I'm still thinking of, but probably not this year if it happens. Um, I wanted to know down to the type of, some of the types of plants, so I noted the types of um, honeyberries I have and the types of raspberries. I need to go through and, and see if I can figure out. I think the tags are still on everything, um, but I should probably actually take them out and do like nice markers. That might be a good project for this year. And then I just put random notes in here, like did I want to do pots of tulips? Um, my tulips that I tried to overwinter in containers last year did not survive, so but we did other pretty pots there for the year. <laughs> and I'm thinking of places I might want to add more evergreen interest or just more winter interest, so that's that. Um, this is a similar page for the orchard. Um, I made some notes on how to do tree pruning. This is the same thing, intention of doing fruit. And I thought I would need, you know, more space, so I folded it up, but <laughs> I didn't end up using it. Um, I thought I could use this for something fun, but anyway. Um, I think I wrote about what fruiting ground covers I might want to add. Again, map what I want to add, what is there. Okay, this page turned out really cute. I really like this page. This is again using acrylographs, um, those the acrylic paint markers. And um, I just was talking, this is about fruit tree guilds and I might make another video about this next year in, in more detail. Um, but basically there's different types of plants, that, or plants that have different functions um, that can be helpful around trees that make kind of their own little ecosystem, in this case called a guild. I, I made lists of the different plants and um, I might recreate this or something because this is this is really nice and I like how that turned out. Um, this was for my pollinator garden. I never really finished this page as I wanted to. I think a child scribbled on it, <laughs> but um, yeah, it is what it is. Herb Fairy Garden, again, I, I made a long list of herbs to add, but it didn't really get much attention this year. I think I ended up adding a um, rhubarb because <laughs> I, well, it was on my list, but also I, I saw one at the nursery that was, I think, on sale. So I, <laughs> I got that, um, but it needs a lot of work, but I paid for that. The Rose Garden got a lot of my energy this year. Um, and I have all these spaces so I only have so much time and energy so this was how I kind of planned out and organized that I, I taped my sketch in here and these are like I actually play I had these um, these are taped down now just with some painters tape I think but um, I had them just I was like moving them around to figure out what order I wanted them in and then here I have a list of tasks to do and I still actually haven't finished the edging on the outside so that's why it's not checked off um, but then the plants and supplies that I would need um, yeah and, and this actually worked, this page worked really, really well for me, so I'm going to probably recreate it for some areas next year. I have a similar page for the front of the house beds. Um, this one's sideways because it was longer. Um, and we did a lot of this this year, but I have more work I want to do on this on, on it next year, so I may actually just move this 
into the new journal, I may redraw it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I got through a lot of these tasks, so um, it looks a lot better now than it did before, and I'm gonna continue to make it look better. I can't wait to see it in like late summer this year with the hydrangeas. Okay, so this page I left for birds in the garden, and I just made some notes on some plants that would be good for birds in the garden because I want to see more of them. Um, I, I do want to do some more research on maybe putting up some bird houses and stuff and what kind of birds we want to attract and how to do that. So, but this was the start of that. Um, I never really continued this year, but you know, maybe next year. Okay, so that <laughs> large section there was just like my setup pages and my overall pages, I guess, is what we would call it. Now, I don't think you would need this many. Um, and I, that's just what I chose to do. But um, I would highly recommend just having, you know, at least some sort of calendar to look at, to refer to. And um, I think some of these are super helpful, like maybe having a page for your goals, wish list page, um, and then just, just some space for if you want to draw out some maps or add lists of what you wanted. But I think this is the meat of the garden journal here. And it is, um, I have it organized by season and by month so at the beginning of each season I made a list of tasks obviously there's a lot fewer in the winter and for most of them I did a nice little decorative page because I wanted to and not necessary but that's part of the reason I'm bullet journaling is so I could also add some art and be creative with it um, yeah so winter tasks there and then I added a page here on winter interest because I want to add more so it was just some ideas during the winter I'll probably do that again this year just like walking around like what can I add um, I might be more specific this year on like what spaces I already have some ideas we added a few things this past year and I'll be adding more in 2023 okay and then I have each month has a calendar and a section for notes and tasks so um, I started recording weather here, which would be great if I did it every day, but I'm not always in this every day, so we'll see. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't do a lot in January last year. It's kind of a downtime. I might actually do a little bit more this year, just as far as starting a few seeds earlier, and um, I'll talk about that in a different video. And for February, same thing. I had some more notes on this one now, though, because I started, I started more seeds in February, and uh, we had a big snow there. And then I have a page uh, for spring, just like I did for winter. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. It's an Audrey Hepburn quote that I love. And honestly, there's a lot of spring tasks. So this is like general spring tasks. And then this page is for bed prep. And I made a list of all of my garden beds that I wanted to prep and when I wanted to prep them by based on when I needed to plant things. I didn't quite get to everything, which is kind of inevitable, especially um, so in 2021, I had my fourth child. So in the fall of 2021, I had a little baby who needed to nurse a lot. So I didn't, I didn't get a lot done um, in the fall. And so I was trying to pick up with that in the spring, but I still had a baby. He's actually still nursing. So, um, but a lot less now, luckily. Um, so yeah, this is kind of, there's just a lot to do and a little time. So with bed prep, I just, it's nice for me to have lists. You'll see a lot of this ends up being lists. And then I add some pretty art in there. <laughs> March, um, I started adding when I, I think I used up these seed packets and um, I thought they were really pretty. <laughs> so I added them in. Um, there's a lot of, I do a lot of seeds starting in March. April had a lot of tasks. It looks like I didn't get through most of them, which is kind of typical. And then May, uh, May you could classify as summer or a spring. I guess I put it in like the summer section here. Um, and it has a whole other page for tasks here. And then I had some notes here. I decided to add some washi tape. I like that, it looks pretty. Um, oh, and I haven't filled this in yet. I have, um, I put this page for noting what I was doing with containers and I ended up taking pictures and I'm gonna glue those in here. So maybe I will 